On this week's Faz TV, we're in Perthshire at Elko Estate. Elko is a traditional rural estate of around 750 acres of arable land, running from the top of Moncrief Hill down to the banks of the River Tay. Alexander Moncrief and his family have owned and managed Elko Estate since the 1920s, with a strong focus on improving biodiversity and environmental practices. We farm under contract from our neighbours, Chaz Hay and Son. They have been our contractors for the last uh, five to ten years. We are hugely happy uh, with what they do for us from an agricultural point of view. We also concentrate very heavily on the uh, environmental side of the estate. For many years, the fields were ploughed up to every single margin possible and it was all about concentrating on agricultural production. And in the last few years, we have been very lucky to be involved in the Agri-Environment uh, Agri Climate Scheme, which has allowed us to do things which we could only have imagined. Uh, from the point of view of having uh, received grant money, uh, it's been amazing uh, from the point of view of being able to put in hedges, ponds, fields of species rich grass to improve the general wildlife uh, diversity on the farm. It's been an amazing uh, opportunity and we've grasped it with both hands. On this date we consider it extremely important uh, that uh, using public money uh, wisely and responsibly can produce results and uh, I think that over the last five years we have done pretty well in achieving uh, good results. We've been lucky enough on the estate to have not only our estate manager who's been uh, has had decades of uh, cultivation experience but we've also taken external advice certainly um, uh, with regard to even applying for the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme. I've always thought that using professional advice uh, pays dividends in the end and SRUC are currently assisting us with reapplying to uh, go back into the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme. I think that for quite a few centuries man has been running the show when it comes to nature and certainly with arable farming uh, there have been uh, a, a lot of changes in nature not necessarily for the good. I think for us to be able to allow nature to reset has been uh, one of the uh, main attractions of going into the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme and it's amazing how nature can reset itself if allowed to in a very very short space of time. It's incredible how we have seen uh, an increase in wildlife uh, and diversity of wildlife on the estate. E even in the first year we saw a massive explosion of hares. For the last couple of years we've uh, seen grey partridge um, that have come back onto onto the farm which is absolutely fantastic. As a result of that we uh, do feed um, the partridges, we also feed all the, uh, uh, we feed uh, the farm birds, not for shooting purposes at all. We've been very fortunate, one of our consultants and our suppliers are King's Seeds which are part of uh, Frontier who are a national uh, company supplying seeds all over, all over the country. They have supplied us with bird feeders which, which we have all around the farm and uh, many, many pallets of a mixed bird seed as well. So that has been absolutely fantastic. So yes, to come back to your question, it's really a restoration of uh, nature on the estate. So we've been incredibly lucky, as I said before, in being uh, awarded grant money to create some amazing areas on the estate. We have other plans to do other things we have a, a business here which is financially stable and it's very, very nice to be able to put some of the profits from the business back into uh, the di uh, biodiversity of the state. I think it's incredibly important also from a political point of view going forward that we are seen to be engaging with the future. All, all of the country uh, has to look to 
uh, going back to nature to a certain extent, I think from, uh, from a political point of view, governments are going to be looking at farms that are concentrating on biodiversity as well as food production. So from that point of view, I, I do think it's also hugely important for the survival of the business as well as for the estate. I'm Paul Chapman. I'm a conservation consultant with SEC Consulting and have been involved in delivering uh, agri-environment advice to uh, farms and estates for over 20 years, um, primarily in uh, northern and eastern Scotland. Um, and I've been um, helping at Elko Estate here with uh, getting the agri-environment scheme uh, prepared for the next round. So the Agri-Environment Climate Scheme, uh, to give it its full name, is a scheme that uh, provides payments to farmers, farms and estates uh, to manage parts of their farm in an environmentally friendly way. So that might be, in the case of an arable farm, it might be managing field margins, it might be creating species rich grassland like, like we, we have here, uh, it might be managing hedgerows, water margins, areas for uh, ground nesting birds, that type of thing. So a couple of years ago um, I came here to Elko uh, to carry out a farm advisory service uh, specialist advice plan on biodiversity and conservation uh, and that was really looking at what uh, the estate had been doing with their agri-environment schemes so far, whether there were any um, adjustments that could be made to improve that um, and then uh, that came up with a few ideas and then um, more recently in the last year the current agri-environment scheme is, is coming to an end here um, and the estate's keen to reapply so I've come back to help uh, pull together that application. So this is a created species rich grassland. Um, it was formerly arable farmland but it's been sown with a mixture of uh, native grasses and wild flowers, uh, perennial wild flowers. Um, it's one of the best examples I've seen in terms of how successful it's been. Sometimes it can be very difficult to get these things to, to work properly, but we've got a hugely diverse sward here with um, oxeye daisy, bird's foot trefoil, uh, red clover, knapweed, yellow rattle, um, yarrow, uh, a whole range of, of native wildflowers. Um, and the good thing about having a mix of wildflowers like this is they'll they all flower at slightly different times, so they provide a sort of continuous source of, of nectar and pollen for um, pollinating insects and other invertebrates throughout, throughout the summer. Well, I think if you're going to uh, successfully implement an agri-environment climate scheme, you, you, you have to kind of be quite committed to it and, and take care, as, as, as Elko have here, with um, the creation of the habitats. Um, it, it's easy to throw in a seed mix, and, and these seed mixes are not cheap. Um, and, but then if you don't have the follow-up management, then that's quite often a waste of money. So um, you, you need to, to, to commit to, to actually um, active management. Um, in terms of planning um, the, the agri-environment scheme, you need to look at what you've already got on the farm and try and build on that. Um, and also in terms of the, the um, options that you choose, try to choose ones that complement each other and create um, habitat networks across the farm. So if uh, farmers watching this are interested in exploring the possibilities for agri-environment schemes. Um, they might want to consider getting a, a farm advisory service uh, ILMP specialist advice plan which can look at what the potential is on their farm um, before they, they commit to, to that sort of scheme um, and all that information is available on the farm advisory service website. I'm Gordon Fowler, I'm estate manager for uh, Easter Elko Estate. Background, I've been here about 25 years. I, I came as a machine operator on the farm and about 2014 there was a change of contractor and my role sort of changed so Alexander and his father asked me if I wanted to be involved you know in management of the houses and such and such and whatever else was going on so I tend the role on. Alexander's always been keen to get really in involved in biodiversity and 218 obviously there was the Scottish Government the AIC scheme so we applied for it and we got into it and it's and it's really changed in, uh, the whole estate round you know as a wildlife so we put in six and a half thousand metres of hedging which is a mixture of hawthorn, maple, gelder rose and blackthorn, which, you know, they're doing fantastic. We put in 
about six acres of species rich grass, which is doing absolutely fantastic. Also, there was about 18 acres of wild bird seed scattered around the farm in different areas, which we, you know, which we obviously they're sown annually, and also grass margins around 20 metres around most of the farm, around a lot of the fields. I think there's about 20 acre of that. And they're, they've just been doing great. A lot of the land that we have taken out is land that's, you know, sheltered by woods and whatever, and not so productive land. So we're finding it's work, it works out well for our contractor. You know, he's, you know, crops and all that are, you know, especially next to woods are not getting shaded out and whatever. And then and also on some of the poorer land, you know, but the wild bird seed and that is doing absolutely fantastic in areas like that. Also, we're growing about 50 acre of uh, green manure each year. Um, we are finding good results. Um, we've had, you know, we do a summer leggy mix, which is, you know, um, phacelia and we can have radish in it. Although we, this year we have dropped the radish just for the fear of it seeding and, you know, falling crop oil seed rape or anything but behind us we've used like an overwinter green manure with clover and that and we're finding that really good there's been a reduction in about 20 percent of nitrogen so you know that was growing right through till um march it was drilled in about the first week in april second week in april and it was just direct drilled straight into the into the green manure and you know it really came well so it's centered behind us on the farm but it'll be great i mean the test will be when the combine goes through it and just to see the difference and hopefully we've managed to save you know at 20 percent and still get the as good a yield elko is also a king's demonstration farm where they have incorporated a variety of conservation crops to boost biodiversity the salesman that's with them, the manager, Alan Johnston, he, when we got into the eggs, we started buying seed and that off them. They were recommended. And so we just started getting involved with Alan and with Kings. And then last year, two years ago, they approached us if they could be, have a demo site for trial plots. So last year they, they tried a little bit and um, it was a success. And again this year they've done a sort of, it's not such a big area, small plus, but more of a green manure in that um, and what, you know, various varieties. So, you know, as a estate, you know, we're, we're lucky, you know, to have people like that and for advice, which is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, the advice that we've had from, you know, whether it's Scottish Government, you know, um, SRUC, it's just been fantastic like. More information on conservation and biodiversity, including access to funding, can be found by visiting the Farm Advisory Service website. Hello, I'm Tiffany Stevenson bringing you this week's Rural Roundup. Alas, as you can see, we've got some nice weather, so hopefully farmers are managing to finish their harvest as it has been a bit stop staff with all the patchy showers over the last few weeks. Following the annual budget review, farmers and crofters are going to receive an increase in their basic payment and greeting payments for 2023, which is great to hear. So the total for BPS and greening combined for 2023 for Region 1 is £223.56. This is a 45 pence increase from last year. For Region 2, you'll be receiving £45.36, also a 15% increase from last year. And Region 3, you'll be receiving £13.76, a 3% increase from last year. It's great to hear they have been reviewing this. So it's looking likely the payments will be being made in September and you may have received a reductions or exclusions letter in the last few weeks. So make sure you go back and read over the reductions and exclusions letter carefully, just in case there is an error. It's always better to double check it. So I have, did have one farmer who received a reductions and exclusions letter and a small area of land had been added back into his farm, which got removed a few years ago after selling it to a local house. I've also heard of another case where 
the reductions exclusion letter was processed before the land maintenance form was processed which got submitted at IAC's time. And this caused a bit of confusion but has been ironed out so do make sure you go back and just check to see why you've had a reduction or exclusion. Good news for those of you in the Uplands, the Scottish Uplands Sheep Support Scheme has now opened for 2023. So applying online is the quickest and easiest method and it's also it's a great way of doing it as it allows for checks to be made in case you enter the number in the wrong format or if you go and duplicate a tag number as well. So it does have these checks in place, it's a great idea to try and do it online if you can. So applications for this round can be submitted through until Thursday the 30th of November. Hopefully you've now all heard about preparing for sustainable farming, where you can claim grant funding for carbon audits, soil sampling and animal health and welfare interventions. So the soil sampling and carbon audits is just a continuation from last year and the claims portal has been open. The animal health and welfare interventions option, I'm delighted to say that claims can now be made. You'll be able to find the claims for this alongside the claims for the other two options. Just have a look on the Rural Payments and Services website. So for making a claim for animal health and welfare interventions, you will need to download an expert advisor form. So this is available on Rural Payments and Services and have it signed and stamped by an expert advisor. So for example, if you have done work with your vet, get them to stamp and sign the form. So this can be done for anything that's been done from the 1st of January this year through until the 31st of December, with claims being made through until the 29th of February 2024. So you may have already done bull fertility testing in the spring. You are able to claim this as long as you've gone and got whoever carried out the bull fertility testing to make sure they stamp and sign the expert advisor form. Likewise, if you have not yet done any of the options, and um, there's seven different options available, if you have not yet done any of those, there is still plenty of time to do this. So you could go and have a look at what your parasites you have, or have a look at calf pneumonia, amongst other things. So it's not too late to take part. Healthy animals are more likely to perform better. So it'd be a great idea if you've got a local veterinary investigation center to consider taking down any dead animals or potentially if you've got some cull ewes, take those down to investigate. So for a post-mortem, they're heavily subsidized by the government. So this allows you to have one price, regardless of if they do a small amount of investigation and find a problem, or if they have to go and carry out further testing just to figure out what it is. So they can look for things like what your worm burdens are like, if there's a problem there, or if you've got iceberg diseases. So it's a great thing to be doing just to get a check on what's actually going on within your animals. So if you're wanting to take one ewe down, it is 63 pounds and 25 pence. If you want to take a batch of ewes down, potentially take three cull ewes down to see what's going on, is 108 pounds and 30 pence. Or if you've got a dead cow, it's a good idea to get a post-mortem to figure out the cause of death. And this is £121.70. It's definitely a great idea to make sure you stay on top of your flock or herd health. Consider if there is any underlying issues. The sooner you find them, the sooner you can do something about it. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again next time.